Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything. So don't even ask. Seriously. How's it growing everyone? Well, we're back in the 4x4 this week taking on some Green Poison XL by Sweet Seeds and Purple Punch by Barney's Farm. Although last week we were taking care of some nitrogen toxicity in the 4x8, there's no such thing over here. Although we would learn a few things this week, it seems that we may actually be coming into swing with our grow method. After all, this is technically just our third season running with General Hydroponics Flora Series Newts, but improvements have clearly been made. Of course, you'll just have to wait until the end of the episode to see, so let's not waste any more time. So as usual, things are going all right. We're optimistic, we're learning, and even better yet, things are looking up. Last time we talked to you guys about this run, we had just successfully accomplished a 100% germination rate by simply throwing our beans right in the medium. From there, we kept the medium moist and placed humidity domes over the submerged seeds to slow the evaporation process. Just a few days later, we would see the first signs of life as plants with helmet head emerged. For long, every single pot had a living plant inside and things were taking off. Although we had left the humidity domes on far too long last season, even prompting damage to several plants as they begun to fade yellow, we were intent on not letting that happen this time. Thinking it was likely from airflow, we opened the vents on top of the dome, but it wasn't long before the first plant showed signs of the same issue. Immediately, we removed the domes and didn't see an issue on the plants. So at this point, we're not sure if we should just ditch the things or simply remove them from the tent the moment you see a plant breach the surface. Either way, they are great for keeping the medium moist during the germination process, keeping everything a little less stressful on the babies at this time. Of course, this wasn't the only issue we had last season. Those of you who have been along for a little bit may remember that we had a mild overwatering issue last season. Not wanting the girls to dry out during germination, we kept things moist, but didn't slow down when the girls popped up. As a result, things began to wither and look rather sick. All we had to do to fix the issue was allow the plants to fully dry out, but it was definitely something we took note of in order to avoid it next run. Just like that, we put the new plan into action, immediately slowing the amount of water we were giving the plants and the frequency as well. You see, there's a very good reason why this is so important. Simply put, these are technically weeds, and that's important to remember. Most people know that weeds can live in more stressful and harsh environments. That's why weeds are what poke up in our driveway and not flowers. Some can even handle strong light for long periods of time. In the end, the time the roots spend growing is the most important at this seedling stage. Not only is the plant establishing a root structure that will deliver necessary sustenance to the plant for the entirety of its life, but the roots are also currently digging deep, fast, and strong in hopes of providing a stable foundation for the plant to grow and open up as many leaves as possible above the ground. So beyond that, what else do we need? Well, there's a few things our ladies specifically need right now to get by. Perhaps the three most important are calcium, nitrogen, and potassium. Whereas calcium allows the plant to grow up big and strong with tough stems and branches, nitrogen helps the plant take up nutrients and is essential for plants to manufacture chlorophyll the stuff that makes your ladies' leaves green. Lastly, potassium benefits our plants in a slew of different ways, with perhaps the most important being the role it plays in transporting water throughout our ladies. That said, these three nutrients are the main three we need at this time, outside of a few micronutrients, which are all in our micro solution anyway, and a little bit of phosphorus to assist the potassium in root development. So, starting out, we feed our girls a very light mixture of nutrients at two milliliters of CalMag, one milliliter of Micro, one milliliter of Grow, and a half a milliliter of Bloom. Remember here, all of these numbers are per gallon of water and mix it in this order. 
With a small dose of nutrients, the girls hit the ground running. Just like that, nodes start to stack and leaves begin to spread, but we did have one other issue worth discussing. As some of you may recall, we had some heat stress when we first started with the Mars Hydro TS-2000. Perhaps a bit too overzealous, we started out the light at 36 inches from our pots at 75% intensity. It wouldn't be long before our plants let us know that they were having too much fun and forcing us to take note of what the light should have been set at from the start. Seeing how we have since upgraded our light to the Mars Hydro TS-3000, we figured that we'd go down to 25% intensity and leave them at the 36 inches where we started the first time. Come to find out, it was actually not enough and we did have some stretching from the green poison right out of the gate. Fortunately for us, it was easily correctable as Mars Hydro makes it relatively easy to adjust the lights by turning a screw on the backside of the power supplies. For those of you that don't remember, we're currently keeping the ballast on the outside of our tent to keep things cooler inside. If not, you may accidentally turn one of the LED panels up more than the other, but the wattage on the meter would actually look like you did it right. In the end, this would mean that you would inadvertently burn some of your girls, as one of the panels was up way too high. Just like that, we went up to 50% and saw immediate signs of improvement. Growth took off faster than it was going before, and the stretching immediately stopped. Nodes began to pack extremely tight, leaving us with long stems and a bushy plant on top. At this point, we're contemplating burying the stem under more cocoa in hopes that roots shoot off the side and further strengthen the plant. The only downfall with the idea is the possibility that doing so could result in the stem being kept too wet and becoming mushy before dying and taking the rest of the plant with it too. Let us know in the comments what you think of that idea, if either way has a significant advantage or disadvantage, and of course, why you think that. In the end, we're always open to new ideas, especially when it comes to making our lives easier when making things better for our girls. It's as simple as that. We love constructive criticism and actually thrive on it, but we are proud to admit we get the most help from experienced growers. Just that in mind, our hope here is that we can create a community of growers, new, novice, and advanced alike, where anyone can come for tips, advice, or to just generally share their success. And it's just the way we believe it should be. We'll get there one day, but for now, we're just focusing on getting to one thing, being able to consistently grow medical grade cannabis. We've already made some improvements over the last season, and that's more than we could ever ask for. Just as we always say, the best way to learn is through the process of trial and error. For a budding gardener, mistakes result in lessons learned and improved crop from here on out. Little improvements every single grow, that's all any of us can do and it's all any of us can ask for. Two and a half weeks after germination and our ladies are looking absolutely wonderful. With lush green babies in the tent and an improved process all around, things are looking up here at Beginner Buds and it's only up from here. Make sure you tune in next week as we look back in on the jackpot autos and our sour diesels in the 4x8. Even better yet, we'll try to solve an issue by listening to some of your advice. Once again, thanks for stopping by. We are thankful for each and every one of you and are proud of the community we're building here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and try to get at least one friend to join the Beginner Buds community this week. If you do, tag us on any one of our social media pages along with the newly joined friend, and we'll send both of you a cool little gift. We'll see you guys next week, and as always, keep learning, keep growing. Catch you later, guys.